The opinions expressed on this program are those of the program hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the station, management, staff, or sponsors. WPSL does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited Well, written consent of WPSL. It's 1108 at WPSL 1590, the talk of the Treasure Coast. And you're on the Sun Palm Financial Broadcast with D. Thomas Cummings. Hey, Dave. Hey, everybody. This is D. Thomas Cummings. My friends and my clients just call me Dave. And we're here at the Sun Palm Financial Broadcast where we talk all things money. And uh, today we're going to be broadcasting again live here from the Treasure Coast of Florida. We are also heard worldwide on Alexa, Google Home, the TuneIn app. So thank you for joining us from wherever you're coming from. And of course, as you heard, Mr. PSL, WPSL himself is in the house as the engineer, Mr. Greg Wyatt. Uh, Today, we're going to be talking about kind of a fun topic, but also one that scares people. We're going to be talking about financial money gurus. We're going to start taking a look at some of these folks, demystifying some of them. Uh, We're also going to be looking at the straight up fraudsters, scamsters, and how you as an investor can avoid being scammed. Now, this is a really heavy duty topic. This is a look in front of bars, right? Absolutely. We're (laughs) going to be in front of the the, in front of the bars. We don't want you to lose your your money. But but with all all, you know, seriousness here, when we're talking about financial gurus, we're talking about people that we listen to for financial advice, right? It would be important, most would think, that we would know what their background is, you know, how successful they were in money and these kinds of things before we get advice from them. But you'll be stunned and amazed what uh, is out there uh, giving you financial advice. Uh, so before we get started, want to uh, make a quick financial, uh, uh, we may be making financial suggestions in the broadcast. We'll give a quick disclaimer here. So. Uh, the information opinions contained in this broadcast have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable they're given for informational purposes only the information is not intended to be used as a sole basis for financial decisions or a solicitation to sell there's an additional uh, disclaimer i'll have today additionally i have to make this following disclaimer various financial and entertainment personalities will be mentioned in this broadcast Information about them is derived from publicly available sources, including administrative filings, court records, and including their own websites and broadcasts. They are meant as information and are not meant to disparage these folks. All right, so we've got it out of the way. Let's talk about it. Money Go gurus. ahead, disparage them. Disparage them. <laughs> uh, money, money gurus, um, should you listen to them and how to avoid these investment scams that are out there? Uh, you have worked your whole life to get what you have, and it can literally be gone in a moment if you run into the wrong person or invested in the wrong place. We'd like to know before we get started, who is your favorite financial guru? If you want to give us a call, 772-340-1590. That's 772-340-1590. All right, so let's get right into the topic. Our first financial guru that we're going to highlight is Mr. Robert Kiyosaki. All right. Now, this is a gentleman that a lot of people have heard of. He wrote this really great book. It's called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. All right. Now, essentially, the way that the book reads is that, you know, he was raised by two dads, I guess. So one was a poor dad, which was his own actual biological dad, as he as he says in his book. And the other one was his uh, friend's father, who was a wealthy gentleman. And he learned from the wealthy gentleman what to do in life to become wealthy. And he simultaneously was learning from his dad what not to do. And so he writes this book. Now, the book has been called into question by a lot of people uh, about whether these characters, the the rich dad, for instance, ever actually existed. There's been kind of a back and forth on that. I'm not going to get into that dispute, but that has been raised. Um, Now, let's talk about his background. So he gives a lot of advice on uh, investing in real estate, gives a lot of advice on what to do with money, uh, invest in hard assets like gold and silver and whatnot. So should we take his advice? Well, 
1977, he started a company called Rippers. Uh, the company eventually went bankrupt. Uh, Kiyosaki then took a job as an associate, sales associate for Xerox until June 1978. Uh, 1993, he published his first book, If You Want to Be Rich and Happy, Don't Go to School. <laughs> In his book, he encouraged parents not to send their children to college and instead enter the real estate business. In 1997, he launched uh, Cashflow Technologies Incorporated, uh, a business and a financial education company that owns and operates the Rich Dad and Cashflow brands. Uh, Kiyosaki's uh, earlier two businesses uh, for surfing bags with Velcro fasteners and t-shirts also went bankrupt. Uh, in an interview with, uh, with C CNBC, I believe it was, uh, Kiyosaki described his books as an advertisement for his higher price seminars. Um, in 2012, Kiyosaki's company, Rich Global LLC, filed for bankruptcy, and he was ordered to pay nearly $24 million to the Learning Annex and its founder. Um, he sold his financial courses for about four, uh, $495, and as far as we can tell, uh, Kiyosaki does not advertise, at least, that he has any investment, insurance, or securities licenses or real estate licenses. So the question is, how does he make his money? Obviously, in business, from what we've seen publicly, um, he's not been very successful. So, um, so he's a three-time loser, bankruptcy. Well, it definitely has some of those things showing up in, in the public record here. And then on top of that, um, he makes his money. His primary source of income appears to be uh, fin being a financial entertainment <clears throat> personality. He's got a YouTube channel and whatnot hmm. um, and selling these courses. We like to call that selling the dream. <clears throat> In other words, hey, are you tired of your job and your boss? You know, the stuff that we all get tired of, right? Are you tired of working endless hours? You know, I'll show you how to become rich, selling the dream. All right. So that's Mr. Kiyosaki. Now, at first glance, it's kind of like, wow. So people actually take advice from someone who's got this track record of, of you know, bankruptcies. Should you? I'll leave that up to you. Uh, Next one, this is uh, Mr. Grant Cardone. He's also pretty famous in the uh, social media, YouTube. He's got his channel and, and so on. Uh, so from what we can tell from publicly derived sources, uh, he graduated from college and he sold cars. Uh, he got into motor racing uh, and then he started buying um, rundown houses and apartments. And then he began to project this opulent lifestyle to convince people he was extremely rich. Um, but the truth is, and he, he, he's one of the people that actually openly stated that the homes and the cars that he was in were leased. Okay, so he didn't claim to own them for, far as we could tell. Uh, and he was talking about don't buy a home, it's better to lease a home or whatever. Uh, so he convinced others to invest in his apartment development projects and had a pretty good degree of success using other people's money to do this. Um, but now Cardone uh, and his company have been sued, alleging he misled investors on social media about potential profits they can make from his multifamily deals. I'm not exactly sure how that played out, if that's come to some resolution or not, or whether those allegations are true. Um, now, many allege that the vast majority of his money comes also from selling the dream. Uh, and there are tremendous exaggerations uh, people have mentioned that have surfaced um, and some have claimed that the only person getting rich is him. Now, uh, Cardone does sell financial courses uh, for hundreds of dollars, um, sales training and, and these kinds of things. He's done crowdfunded investments um, that are subject to federal security regulations um, and those guard against misstatements and omissions. So from what we can tell uh, based on the class action lawsuits and some of these other things, uh, we've never seen Grant, uh, from what we can tell, that he's never advertised that he has any investment insurance, uh, securities licenses, real estate licenses, or any of these things. So the question again is, what's how does he make his money? So FINRA couldn't go after him. Right. Well, it depends. So this is where it gets into kind of the shady areas, the gray areas. If you're offering something as a security, right? If you're saying, okay, well, invest with me, you'll get extra churn, that is a security, technically. 
So you need to be licensed or you at least need to have some sort of um, uh, disclosures, disclaimers. There, there's regulations that you know, go along with this. But FINRA, for instance, um, they, would, they would spend the rest of their natural life chasing these types of characters because they're everywhere. I mean, you go on your YouTube channel, right, and you start watching, and in a few minutes you'll have a, an advertisement. Why aren't you investing in such and such, right? This is, this is a real problem. They're everywhere. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that uh, Mr. Cardone is in that category. We just don't know. We know that others have sued him and made these complaints. Um, he does seem to have a degree of success. Uh, but again, it's hard to see and hard to tell whether you should really take this, this person's advice. Is there success from business or is there success from selling the dream and being a uh, financial guru TV personality? And this is the, the thing that we continue to, to see with a lot of these folks. Now, there's a key word that you're going to hear from a lot of these types of folks. Uh, it's called a certified investor. So they're always advertising, are you a certified investor? Are you a certified investor? Oh, the qualified investor uh -huh. type? Right. Exactly. So basically oh. what they're trying to, to ascertain is do you have, I think the, the, the qualification is a half million or more in assets you know, to become a qualified investor. And why is that? Because Technically, the government views those folks differently. They view them as a bit savvy financially, and that's how they've achieved a certain amount. So if, if an investor falls into that category, there tends to be less scrutiny on whatever they're selling to that category, because that category of people should be savvy enough financially to be able to dismiss what is and isn't a good investment kind of thing. So this is why you see a lot of these folks are advertising towards that market. So it's kind of an interesting uh, approach and we're seeing a lot of it. Um, again, if you have uh, your favorite financial guru, we'll probably be covering them, but if, if you wanna give us a call 772-340-1590, tell us what your famous, uh, favorite famous financial guru is, we'll talk about them next. Uh, so here, let's go to the next one, Ty Lopez. Now, Mr. Ty Lopez, he's all over the place. Everywhere you look on YouTube, um, this is the guy. What's his, YouTube? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the guy. His most recent schemes, uh, you know, investment opportunities, whatever you want to call it. Basically, he, he went and he partnered up with this guy. Uh, his name is Alex Mir, who's a pretty successful uh, guy and they partnered up and they had this idea to buy all of these name brand companies that used to be in the retail sphere and kind of fell off. So for instance, uh, Radio Shack, uh, Dress Barns, uh, Linens and Things, Franklin Mint, Steinmart, these companies that kind of over time have fallen out of the retail space because of competition probably from like Amazon and other online retailers and so on. So what these guys decided to do, and it's actually sounded like a pretty smart idea, they decided to purchase those brands and just turn them into an online store, right? Because they had a certain degree of name recognition, naturally the thought would be, hey, well, okay, I liked this brand, they've fallen off, but there's still a, a group of people out there that liked the brand and would still be purchasing if they had an online website. So um, New York Post reported that Lopez and his business partner and co-founder, Alex Mayer, uh, they own this Miami-based retail e-commerce venture. Um, and the company spent $120 million to amass a portfolio of aging retail names, including Dress Barn, Linens and Things, Steinmart, Franklin Mint, and basically, the question that would naturally arise is, was this a good investment? You know, did it succeed? You know, how's it looking now? And in all honesty, when I first heard about it, and they were looking for qualified investors, <clears throat> I, I reached out. I said, okay, let's see what's going on with this. Maybe a great idea, might be a catastrophic failure. And as I'm talking to them, um, 
Ty Lopez used to actually have this conference call that he'd get everybody on. So you'd be like, get on Tuesday's investor orientation call tomorrow. You know, we'll, we're going to get you 25% return and yada, yada, yada. This is a big, you know, being a, a financial guy, this is a big return that this guy was, was you know, trying to say. So, um, but actually I keep using the improper terms, accredited investor, accredited investor. <clears throat> so if you're an accredited investor, come on. So if you were not an accredited investor, you couldn't even participate in this thing, by the way. So that was kind of one way, one layer of covering uh, for protection. Anyway, so as I'm talking to these folks, I'm listening to their conference calls. It was a lot of high energy uh, sales pitch type of stuff where they get you excited and everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, we, we get in on this now to make all kinds of money. And people are throwing them money. Well, I didn't send any money because my question was, what's your business model, right? How is this thing going to function? So my biggest question that I never got the answer to was, all right, so you're shifting everything from physical stores to an online market. My question was, when you purchased the companies, did you also purchase the agreements or the contracts with their suppliers? Oh. Yeah. So in other <laughs> words, if it's Radio Shack, Radio Shack doesn't produce and manufacture their own parts and, and, and things that they sell. They have agreements with other companies that provide and, and manufacture these, these things. Same with the clothing brands. Who is the actual manufacturer for the clothing brands? Who are the supplier of, the, of these items that used to make them so famous? And if they didn't have those agreements in place, then the next question would be, okay, is your goal then to simply sell off the current inventory that those retail stores have? And that seemed to be the business model. But then the question is, well, what, what happens when you sell off that inventory? So it almost gave me the impression that the goal was to get rich quick and then, so sorry, walk away. Now, later on, um, other organizations, media organizations started to look at these websites after a period of time. And some of the items or a lot of the items were out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. So my my intuition was correct on this one. Uh, so this company that they have, Rev, that bought all these uh, companies, it's, uh, <clears throat> it was reported now that Rev's revenues and losses last year were both 60 million compared to 150 million in sales in 2021, 90 million in losses, uh, and that the last known situation this company was in, according to Wall Street Journal, was they were $200 million in debt. That's a lot of debt. Ah, minor stuff. Yeah, and uh, that they had actually, um, Wall Street Journal also reported that they had hired uh, attorney law firm uh, Kirkland and Ellis to explore restructuring options. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of a scary thing. So is this business a no-go? I think so. I, I don't think it's successful. Um, the business model had major flaws and a lot of people invested money into this a lot of people and so the brands no longer have the value that they even paid for them so when you look at this you're like well how's the how's this guy making money then <clears throat> is he making money off of the people that are sending money is that how he he lives his lifestyle um there is a um expose done on him mr lopez back in 2015 by uh markettrap.com and in all of his videos on YouTube, Mr. Lopez is walking around with his phone. He's showing you his Lamborghinis, his Ferraris, his house in Beverly Hills and all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> and he's projecting to everybody how rich he is. And if you invest with him and you take his courses, you can live like this too, basically selling the dream. And uh, so they went behind him <clears throat> and they looked into the situation and they're like, well, hey, does he own the house? No, he doesn't. <laughs> he's not the he's not the registered owner of this house in Beverly Hills, you know. What about these cars? Well, they seem to be leased and and so forth. So, long story short, it gives the impression that it's all a facade. It's a facade that, you know, I, I, look at me, I'm Mr. Successful. Therefore, send in your money 
I'll show you how to be like me. And by the way, if you're an accredited investor, you know, invest in this. Uh, but the truth is, right now, it's not looking too good for him. Uh, <laughs> many people are saying that you know his claims are misleading. Uh, they only amount to a financial benefit for Mr. Lopez. Um, and you know there are potentially some de deceptive practices. Now, how much of a following does this guy have? Eight million followers. Eight million on Never TikTok. Never heard of this guy yeah. before. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, oh, Snapchat, okay. Facebook, and all of these. Uh, he also writes these self-help books, uh, including uh, his 67 steps on how to become wealthy, happy, and incorporates his teachings of the powerful people and famous people. Uh, so he's, he incorporates quotes from some of these actually successful folks into his books and and into his you know sales courses. Um, but as far as we can tell uh, from publicly available information, it, it seems, or at least he advertises that in the past he was a, a broker, so he must have had a license of some sort for that. Uh, but we can't tell whether he currently has an active investment, insurance, or securities license, real estate licenses, or any of these kinds of things. So how does he make his money? Um, well, that's, that's another question. His uh, 60 step 67 step program costs 67 dollars so if you do that times 8 million followers <laughs> that's, that's that's a bunch of money uh so it, it's more than likely he makes his money being a financial guru and selling the dream so anybody get their money back you know i don't know uh, this is one of those questions where first you know, there's smoke and then maybe there's fire later. I don't know, we're, you know, we're gonna have to see how that pans out. But um, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a question mark. Now, we're about to head off to a break here. And when we come back, we're gonna pick up on a few uh, more high profile financial gurus I know you've heard of, so stay tuned. dreams look like and how far are you willing to chase them before giving up or are you willing to stay the course to achieve them do you dare believe are you willing to work for them strive hard to never give up until they are realized are your dreams worth chasing well if they are Welcome to Sun Palm Financial, a place where dreams become a reality. Whether your dream is to grow and to thrive towards the good life or to simply experience freedom through financial security, come share your dreams with us. Sun Palm Financial, invest, grow, protect. SunPalmFinancial.com Old money. Why is old money respected more than new? It's not because new money spends their fortunes outrageously and the old money gets jealous. Old money is respected because it has grown over time and is maintained over many, many generations. You see, most new money will be blown eventually or wasted by the second generation. And the descendants of new money just get poorer and poorer after that. But at Sun Palm Financial, we'll help you to create generational wealth that will grow with each new chapter. So if you've been fortunate enough to come into some new money, or right now to schedule your free consultation so that you can join the old club. Sun Palm Financial. Invest. Grow. Protect. SunPalmFinancial.com All right, welcome back to the Sun Palm Financial Broadcast. I'm your host, D. Thomas Cummings. And today we're talking about financial gurus. Should you listen to them? We've been highlighting different ones uh, throughout the broadcast. Of course, we're taking publicly available information 
is uh, as we're looking at these situations and looking at their background, education, and whatever, and should you even listen to these folks, right? We're not trying to disparage them in any way. Now, the next one that we have, and by the way, if you have your favorite financial guru that you'd like to talk about, 772-340-1590, uh, give us a call. Now, the next one, uh, we're kind of getting now into the more high profile ones. So next one is Mr. Jim Cramer. <laughs> <laughs> CNBC, oh. Jim oh. Cramer. Now, <clears throat> Jim Cramer has this show on CNBC. It's called Mad Money. And uh, basically where he makes these predictions about the you know, stocks and, and what you should invest in and these sorts of things. And, uh, you know, he makes his recommendations and people and, and over the years now have taken those recommendations and lost about everything. <laughs> Just joking. I don't know whether they've lost everything, but if they put it in some of these investments, I'm sure they, they took a hit. Let's talk about some of them. This is publicly available information. On March the 11th, 2008, um, on that episode of Kramer's show, Mad Money, uh, there was a question that a viewer posed. They said, should I be worried about Bear Stearns in terms of, <laughs> of liquidity and get my money out of there? Kramer responded, no, no, no. Bear Stearns is not in trouble. If anything, they're more likely to be taken over. Don't move your money from Bear. Well, those of you who were not around back then or have forgotten, Bear Stearns went under. And what a hit that was. Not only to those investors who had their money sitting in there, but to the really not just the U.S. financial economy. Oh, this is worldwide. Went global. Yep. Yeah, terrible situation there. Uh, on March 14, 2008, uh, the stock lost more than half of its value on the news with a Fed bailout. This was for um, Washington Mutual. Uh, two, $2 per share takeover by J.P. Morgan Chase. That was another one. Uh, he was also wrong on Meta, uh, which lost 40% as a result of mass layoffs. This was uh, Mark Zuckerberg's uh, you know, shift from uh, Facebook to Meta. He was, and most people don't even know what I'm talking about. And this was supposed to be one of the, one of the biggest uh, moves in the tech industry. Uh, so Meta crashed and burned in a lot of ways, uh, did not meet expectations. Um, so that's not the new parent company? It, it is, but it's kind of uh, <laughs> what, what, was okay. expect, what was expected versus what gotcha. performance-wise okay. okay. was. Yeah. For the, the, like I said, uh, lost a 40% um, result. Uh, mass layoffs came. Uh, now, one of the most recent ones uh, Jim Cramer was wrong on was Silicon Valley Bank. Um, so this is the bank that was out there in Silicon Valley, California. And... There was a run on the bank because there were some um, issues with how they had invested the money. Uh, they didn't have enough um, hedge uh, in place to protect losses. And then as you know, those losses started to go, people started to get worried, stock price started to drop. He thought it was uh, a great investment opportunity. Buy it now and you know, when it rebounds, it'll be great. No, my friends, we know the end of that story. So Silicon Valley Bank, is no more so with a track record like that you know it, it, I, I don't even know how the guy stays on the air um it's a really scary thing uh because you know he's given a huge platform well he's almost a caricature of himself well you know some people would give that impression and the truth is I, you know i'm not going to disparage him in any way he gives his recommendations uh but the track record is you know historically bad in my opinion um as a actual financial professional um i would have looked at any one of those situations and had a very different uh approach to them in probably a very short period of time exactly uh, so how does he make his money? Now, you're starting to see a trend here as, as we go through these, right? <clears throat> so he has a subscription-based product called CNBC Investing Club with Jim Cramer. The exclusive investor-focused product will equip members, this is a quote, uh, with Cramer's unparalleled knowledge <laughs> and analysis of portfolio management and investing. 
and give behind the scenes access to Kramer and the investing club team. So as far as we can tell, he, he makes his money being a TV financial mm -hmm. guru personality um, and through this subscription based program and, and so forth where he's come on, say it with me, selling the what? Selling the, dr <laughs> selling selling the, the dream. dream. Yeah, that's it. Yes. Selling the dream. So this is becoming a, a pretty common <laughs> thing here, selling the dream. Now, let's stop on that for a minute, selling the dream. <clears throat> we actually have a commercial that you've heard, I'm sure it's called Dreams, mm -hmm. what, right? Why, why is it that these folks want to sell you the dream? Well, it's a great marketing tool right? People have hopes, they have dreams, they have aspirations, they want to go out there and do things in, in their life that they, they, you know, that's what really inspires us to get up in the morning, right? So it is an important thing in your life to have a goal, to have a dream and pursue it. And Sun Palm Financial, we recognize that we want to help you get there. But there are some people, they don't want to help you get there. They want to take your dream and they want to try to profit themselves from that. In other words, if you want to have your dream, give them money, right? Not, hey, come to us, we'll help you invest your money and, and where you can log in at the end of the day every night and look at your account balance and see if it's performing or not. No, give them money and trust them. Bad. All right, so... As we're moving along, I'm going to get to the next one, which is going to break a lot of hearts. If you have a fi favorite financial guru, give us a call, 772-340-1590. My, my next one's going to break a lot of hearts. I'm going to get all kinds of Hades thrown in my direction because of it, but just be ready. Mr. Dave Ramsey. All right. Now, Mr. Dave Ramsey. 1986, Ramsey amassed a portfolio. A lot of this comes from his website and publicly available information. Um, 1986, he amassed a portfolio with over $4 million in real estate. However, when the Competitive Equality Banking Act of 1987 took effect, several banks changed ownership and recalled his $1.2 million loans and lines of credit because he was over leveraged. It's actually over levered, but uh, Ramsey was unable to pay and filed for bankruptcy in 1988. So the first point here, as a financial guru, we have a guy who has filed bankruptcy. Not a good sign. Now, two years later, I'm going to stop right there and let everyone absorb this. Two years later, he founded the Lampo Group, a financial counseling service. Ramsey uh, says he experienced several years of financial recovery and began offering financial advice to couples at his local church. And in 1992, he wrote the self-published, uh, his self-published first book called Financial Peace. Ramsey began one of three alternating hosts of the Money Game Show. That's what it looks like on radio station WWTN in Nashville, 1992. Show eventually became the Dave Ramsey Show. Ramsey's daily three-hour call-in financial advice talk show. Now, one of, on, on, one, on one of Ramsey's shows, this was a really important thing. This was fairly recently. A caller called in, and they asked him point blank, how did you make your first million, right? So if you're talking to a financial guru, you want to know this question, right? How did you make your first million? Ramsey honestly replied, and I give him credit for this, <clears throat> that he made his first million doing coaching, teaching, the financial stuff, right? And so essentially what has happened, and I want, I want to go through the, the chain of events, and by the way, Ramsey now uh, claims that he owns uh, millions of dollars worth of real estate. I think, I think if I'm not mistaken, on one of his shows, he said he owns hundreds of millions of dollars in real estate. I don't know how true or exaggerated that is, um, but long story short, person calls in, says, hey, how did you make your first million? And he said he got it from teaching and coaching, basically selling the dream, right? So the guy files bankruptcy, and within two years, he's teaching people how to become rich, right? He, or at least teaching people about money. Now, I'll be the first to tell you, 
you can definitely learn from your mistakes, right? And if that is ultimately his business model, that's respectable. But I'm sorry, if I'm coming to invest my money somewhere, I'm not going to go to that person for advice, bottom line. Um, even if the information sounds good, you really, it has to be vetted well. I'm looking for someone who has success, a proven track record of it, and has a lot of guidance and a lot of, um, you know, experience. And this is a very important part I'm going to make here. As far as I can tell, Dave Ramsey has never advertised that he has an investment license, insurance license, securities licenses, real estate license that he's never advertised that as far as I've been able to find. So why would you go to somebody for financial advice who's got bankruptcies and we're all of these that we're talking about meant not all of them, but most of them have either bankruptcies or failures in business major catastrophic failures in some cases and don't have licenses that are active or even ever and people go and they hang on every word and gesture these people say now with the books this is another thing that's very common not only are they selling the dream and financial coaching and whatever um, there's something uh, ramsey has is called financial peace university now i've heard it's actually pretty good from those who have taken it so i'm not going to knock it until i've heard it but it costs 70 dollars to go through this this course uh, it's offered mostly in churches and so I don't know, the books, the, the selling the dream, all this kind of stuff. Now, when we're talking about the books, uh, one of his best selling books was one on how to reduce debt. Um, and it's actually, the information seems to be pretty good. Uh, it's, he calls it the snowball method, I believe. Um, but years before that book ever came out, there was a guy who was actually a business guy and a pastor, his name was John Avancini. He wrote a book called rapid debt reduction strategies, right? So if you take the two books, they're so, so similar, really. And they describe the same process, essentially. How similar? Pretty similar, <laughs> pretty similar. So I guess my point is that sometimes you're gonna get this fantastic financial advice from, from people or you'll hear something that's just, oh, that's so great. Well, guess what? It's probably regurgitated from someone who really knew what they were talking about. Um, it's not hard to duplicate some of these ideas uh, in your own, just change it in your own words, you know, because some of these strategies are, they've been around forever. So um, I would just say with any of these folks, be careful. Um, I'm going to lay out a couple things that they all seem to have in common. So the first thing is they're not uh, personally successful in business in a big way, really. Most are failures, they filed bankruptcies, uh, they made no money in their ventures uh, outside of being in financial entertainment uh, personalities and their classes and selling the dream. Uh, a lot of these folks, uh, most in fact, lack education beyond a four-year degree uh, or even in a related field. Uh, most of them severely exaggerate their net worth and are most often show offs to portray that they have success. Um, or as my <laughs> friends in the rap world would say, they be fronting. <laughs> uh, most lack any financial or insurance licenses, real estate licenses, despite pushing people to invest in these things. Um, they are marketing geniuses. They are everywhere. And their primary source of income seems to be selling the dream. So that, that's something to look out for there. You know, when, when they're selling their books, when they're marketing how to get rich and these, these kinds of things, whatever. Uh, like for instance, Ramsey has this referral program. When you call in and you give him your financial scenario, almost at, half the time, at least, he's like, well, talk to our folks over at the Smart, Press, uh, Smart Vester Pro. So he refers you over to the financial people that are in his network. Why? Because he gets a kickback, of course. Uh, or he's got another thing called Referral Pro for business leads. Another thing that's a real estate pro to find a recommended realtor. Uh, he also does brand marketing on his website where people can put their company uh, logos on his website or whatever. 
So really, is he making money for people or is he making money for himself? It's a legitimate question, right? So what do you, what do you look for in a real financial guru? All right, this is, a, this is the, <laughs> the real question, right? The first thing, uh, well, I actually tell you what, we're gonna go to break and when we come back, we'll talk about that. <laughs> real financial guru. old money respected more than new. It's not because new money spends their fortunes outrageously and the old money gets jealous. Old money is respected because it has grown over time and is maintained over many, many generations. You see, most new money will be blown eventually or wasted by the second generation. And the descendants of new money just get poorer and poorer after that. But at Sun Palm Financial, we'll help you to create generational wealth that will grow with each new chapter. So if you've been fortunate enough to come into some new money, or right now to schedule your free consultation so that you can join the old club, Sun Palm Financial. Invest. Grow. Protect. SunPalmFinancial.com Dreams. What do your dreams look like? And how far are you willing to chase them before giving up? Or are you willing to stay the course to achieve them? Do you dare believe? Are you willing to work for them, strive hard to never give up until they are realized? Are your dreams worth chasing? Well, if they are, Welcome to Sun Palm Financial, a place where dreams become a reality. Whether your dream is to grow and to thrive towards the good life or to simply experience freedom through financial security, come share your dreams with us. Sun Palm Financial, invest, grow, protect. SunPalmFinancial.com All right, welcome back to the Sun Palm Financial Broadcast. We talk all things money. Today's conversation has been about these financial gurus that are out there on TV and the internet, and frankly, everywhere, telling you to invest with them or buy their books or to learn from them by spending all this money on courses, and they'll teach you how to be rich. As we've learned, we've highlighted a lot of them. Uh, we've kind of demystified them. And it's not all that it seems there. So how do you find a real financial guru? What do you look for, right? So I've got kind of a little list and then uh, we'll kind of move on to the next part. So the first thing, of course, education. Um, if you're talking to someone and they have a GED or high school education only, um, do you really want to invest your money with someone who hasn't even gone off and gotten their four-year degree, you know, been out there um, in the educational sphere that uh, underscores at least a part of, you know, what they're doing. Like, if it may not have to be specifically finance, but maybe business, finance, some, something along those lines um, would be helpful. But really, the more education, the better. If you have people that have master's degrees, um, or if they're a CPA, as uh, an attorney certified, or you know have been successful in the business world themselves with their education, that's that's a good sign. Uh, experience. So education is important, but experience is more important. Folks who have been in uh, the financial world for a period of time, they know a thing or two. They've seen the rises and falls, the ebbs and flows. Uh, if you go to sunpalmfinancial.com, by the way, my bio's there under uh, our team. If you want to kind of look at my bio and what my background is, um, it's very important for for people to know where you come from, you know, what's, what's your 
what's your success level look like individually? You know, do you have integrity? So that's important. Uh, so education, experience, integrity. I, by the way, on the experience side, I, I was in banking. I was a branch manager uh, during the Great uh, Recession. And I remember being on the phone. I could see it happening. I could see it coming. And I, rem I got my, my PFRs, or personal financial reps, on the phone to contact every person in my book of business that had an adjustable rate mortgage. I called all of them. I said, you need to refi to a fixed rate. You need to do it now. And most people took me up on that offer. And I explained why, and some of them were like, yeah, but it's going to cost a little more per month. I said, trust me, do this. They took my advice, saved a lot of people from terrible ruin. Um, Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. And Great the, advice. Yeah. And so experience is, is an important factor. Um, integrity, very important. If, if a person is lying to you within the first few minutes or they're trying to front to you about how much money they have or how successful they are, that should be a red, red flag. The truth is, if you do have a lot of money, you shouldn't, well, most people I know, uh, we're not going to advertise it to you. <laughs> because when you advertise how much money you have, what happens? Well, people try to sue you. They try to you know get your stuff. They try to shake you down. There, nothing good comes out of it, you know, the, truthfully, if you actually do have, you know, assets and, and, and whatever. So most people who uh, are successful financially kind of keep that on the down low to a, much of a degree as they can. I used to love uh, Dr. Jerry Buss, the owner of the Lakers and yep. um, Pendleton and Jeans. <laughs> exactly. I, I, you know, you yeah. will never, yeah. ever believe it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah. own half of Beverly Hills. Yeah. Well, um, another thing that you want to look for, well, your, your financial advisor should have errors and omissions insurance. So when folks come in to talk to me, we document everything that we talk about in our conversation. And when we make a recommendation financially, we get folks to sign off on it. We, we want to make sure they've seen some illustrations or at least understand what they're getting in, into and that they clearly know what they're investing in. Um, why? Because if I lie to you or I omit information, I have something called errors and omissions insurance. If they don't even have that, you know, don't even invest with that person. Don't even think about investing with that person. That, you know, that's that's something every person in this, my field that's basic should have. stuff. Exactly. Um, you want them to be clear and understandable. If they can't uh, tell you what you're investing in without just rattling off a bunch of acronyms and whatever that you don't understand, don't mess with that person. Uh, properly licensed. You want to make sure that person is properly licensed in whatever they're doing, right? So if they're selling insurance products, annuities, make sure they have their uh, annuities license. They're in Florida, it's the 215, a life health variable annuity. Um, uh, certifications are also helpful. It shows that they have uh, taken exams that set various standards. Uh, and if you can pass that exam, you obviously uh, have achieved a certain uh, notoriety in, in the standard of uh, whatever that uh, certification is. Um, and here's my my best one. And, and I, 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 how do I put this? I don't want to offend anyone with this, but personal success. When folks come to me, they're going to meet a person who has had personal success in business. Okay, why is this important? When you come to me and you sit down with me and I make recommendations for you, it's not based on what is going to get me the most commission. Right. You go into some of these big house uh, investment firms, these names, they're going to often push the things that get them the most commission uh, and, and so on. Or they're going to push you to that bank's products or that investment house's products. We're at Sun Palm Financial. We're a, an independent agency and we can we have contracted with the top companies in the world. And we only go with the best. And the reason why is we only want to recommend the best. So whether you pick the best A, the best B, or the best C, doesn't matter to me. You're going to be taken care of. And independently, I'm financially successful. I don't need your investment 
to become successful. So there's no pressure for me. In other words, I, I don't have to worry about paying my bills if you don't invest with me, right? This is a big deal because, you know, I, I'll liken it to this and as we get to the end of the, the program. If you're Tiger Woods, right, one of the best golfers in the world, are you going to go down to your local mini golf and ask that guy there for putting advice? <laughs> of course not. You're Tiger Woods. You're going to go to someone else who is a successful golfer. Maybe you'll go to Palmer or maybe you'll go to somebody else who's, who's successful in, in golf. And that's the person you're going to say, hey, I, I, I don't know why I'm, my, my putt is not you know, where it should be or my swing is a little off. What are you seeing here? And that person can then make recommendations based on their own success, based on their, their own you know, business acumen. And so these are some of the things you want to look for when you're trying to find a financial guru to seek out, right? Now, what do you want to look for with how to make your money? <clears throat> well, there's a lot of different ways and a lot of different means, but it kind of comes down to buy low, sell high have good, reliable information, work hard in the right areas. Um, time is a good indicator. Um, if you invest in something long enough, eventually you're gonna see that, that grow. Um, if you have life insurance and you pay it for, that's one of the biggest things, biggest ways for common people to acquire wealth. And uh, it's aleatory, meaning that you put in very little compared to what you get out. Um, also, Invest in safe, sound investments with a long track record of success. And you also want to pay it forward to your next generation. We talk about growing generational wealth. Each generation should get richer, right? So reach out to us, www.sunpalmfinancial.com for your free consultation. And we'll sit down with you and get you on the right path. Thanks, everybody. Sounds good. And again, uh, phone number? Uh, you can reach out to us at 561-783-3334 or sunpalmfinancial.com. Sounds good. See you next week, Dave. You bet.